Hello class, this is section 5.5 and in this video we are going to discuss unique eigenfunctions for a regular stern Louisville problem. So if uh, we have an eigenvalue lambda that has two eigenfunctions, we have to show that one of the eigenfunctions is a constant multiple of the other. So let's write down the stern Louisville operator in op a stern Louisville equation in operator form. So we have L of f1 plus lambda sigma x f1x equals 0. And since we have two eigenfunctions, let's write the equation for the other eigenfunction as well. Lambda sigma x f2x equals 0. All right. Now let's solve for lambda in both equations. So the first equation gets us lambda equals L F1 divided by sigma x F1x. And the second equation, let me write down it this way, lambda equals to L F2 over sigma x F2x. So equating the two equations, we get L F1 over sigma x F1x equals L F2 over sigma x F2x. And we can write all this down as L F1 F2x minus L F2 F1x. All this is multiplied by sigma x and this is equal to zero. However, um, sigma x is always positive. That's one of the conditions of the regular stern level problem, so we can just ignore it. And we're left with this equation instead. But if you may recall Lagrange's identity, we've just shown that the left-hand side is zero. This goes away. And therefore, we have that the derivative of px, f2x, derivative of f1, x minus f1x, that this expression has a derivative of 0, and therefore this must equal to a constant c. Remember, the derivative being equal to 0 implies that the expression is constant. That's what we have here. This is 0. All right. Now the question remains as to what constant is this going to be? And what rescues us once more are going to be the boundary conditions. Now you may remember that we have these boundary conditions, beta 1, f1x plus, no, let's call it a, plus beta 2, f1 prime a equals 0. And both um, f1 and f2 obey these boundary conditions. Um, they also apply for B, but it's not going to matter here. So we have these equations holding for beta 1, beta 2, real. Now let's assume that beta 2 not 0. The case where beta 2 is 0, uh, we're going to cover that in your homework. And this just gets us that f1 prime a is equal to minus beta 1 over beta 2 f a, f1 a and f1 prime b is equal to minus beta 1 over beta 2 f1, oh no, um, f2 a is equal to beta 1 over beta 2 f2 b a. All right, uh, got to my a's and b's mixed up there, but here are the right expressions. So we plug in a here in this equation, and what we get is that p a F2a. Now the derivative of F1a is just going to be minus beta 1 over beta 2 F1a. And then we also subtract F1a. And the derivative of F2a is just going to be minus beta 1 over beta 2 F2a. 
equals C. And this implies that PA minus beta 1 over beta 2, F1A, F2A plus beta 1 over beta 2, F1A, F2A equals C. However, um, these terms cancel out over here. This goes to zero, and we're left with C equals zero. And C is a constant, it doesn't depend on X, so this C must also have been equal to zero. And we have therefore shown that F2 F1 prime minus F1 F2 prime must be equal to zero, so let's write it down. x minus f1 x f2 prime x equals to zero and the last step is just using the quotient rule the derivative of f2 x over f1 x and by the quotient rule we square the bottom function and we have low d high minus high d low which is exactly what we have over here. So this is equal to zero. But this implies that F2x over F1x is a constant, let's call it k. And therefore, one eigenfunction is just a constant multiple of the other, just as we had set out to prove.